Good evening, and happy feast day of St. Therese of Lisieux. How appropriate that we are gathering tonight on the feast day of this patron saint of mission. As we begin, our thoughts and prayers are with, are with those who are impacted by the hurricane on the East Coast. We pray for their safety and their well-being. So welcome to our third virtual Rose Gala. I am Damien Cabot, and I am the Executive Director of the Lay Mission Helpers Association. And I'm Marie Browers, currently serving as the President of the Board of Directors, and I too would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us this evening. So let's start our program tonight with a special prayer from Bishop Larry J. Kulik from the Diocese of Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the 2022 Virtual Rose Gala of the Lay Mission Helpers. This event is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the missionaries of lay mission helpers and to help support their service to the most marginalized around the world. Pope Francis frequently speaks about the need for the faithful to reach out to those on the peripheries, the poor, the uneducated, the sick, the disabled. He continually reminds us that we are called through our baptism to be missionaries of Christ to the world. The lay mission helpers have heeded the Holy Father's words and truly fulfill Christ's command to the apostles in the Gospel of Matthew to go and make disciples of all nations, particularly for the least of these. Not only do the lay mission helpers meet the people on the peripheries by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, but they actually travel to the physical peripheries of civilization to do so and to walk with those who are marginalized. In today's uncertain political climate and the constantly changing world, they beautifully and selflessly make great personal sacrifices to take themselves and often their families to a very different culture sometimes needing to learn a completely new language in order to share their God-given gifts and hard-earned skill sets as teachers, healthcare workers, technicians, accountants, and many other professional roles in the service of God and his church. As Pope Francis says, in the poor and outcast, we see Christ's face. By loving and helping the poor, we love and serve Christ. The lay mission helpers truly fulfill our Christian missionary directive to serve as God's hands and feet to the neediest of his children. I am honored to offer up this blessing to begin this year's Rose Gala. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We bless you, O God, and we praise your name. In your merciful providence, you sent your Son into the world to free us from the bondage of sin by his own blood and to enrich us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Before he returned triumphant over death, to you, Father, he sent his apostles, the bearers of his love and power, to proclaim the gospel of life to all peoples. Lord, look kindly on your servants who are sent forth as messengers of salvation and peace. Guide their steps with your mighty arm and with the power of your grace, strengthen them in spirit so that they will not falter through weariness. Make their words the echo of Christ's voice so that those who hear them may be drawn to obey the gospel. Fill the hearts of your missionaries with the Holy Spirit, so that, becoming all things to all people, they may lead many to you, the Father of all. Grant that the embrace of your church may extend to all people of every tongue and every nation. Enable us to go into the world and bring the good news to the lowly and to heal the brokenhearted. Make us messengers of the gospel and witnesses 
to your divine love before all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Teresa of Lisieux, patron saint of missions, pray for us. Thank you, Bishop, for praying for us and with us. And we would especially like to thank you for your support of Karen Hunka from your diocese, who is currently serving her fourth year in Ghana. We are also very grateful to each and every one of you who support us financially and through prayer. We couldn't serve without your help. We would especially like to thank all of our gala sponsors who have already made their donation for tonight's event. And if you would like to join them, feel free to click on that donate button or text Mission LMH to 41444. Mission LMH to 41444 and help us meet our $30,000 goal. The silent auction is also still open and it'll be open till Monday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So there's plenty of time to bid on that African safari you've had your eye on. There are also other domestic and international trips available. There are many gift card wallets that are great for Christmas gifts, pottery, and other handiworks from our mission locations. There's something for everybody and for every budget. All proceeds will help us to continue to serve, recruit, and train new lay mission helpers. We have been blessed with supporters like you from the very beginning. The generosity of Catholic community in the United States enabled Monsignor Anthony Browers, our founder, to respond to the requests for help from mission dioceses. That same support allowed ordinary Catholics to respond to God's call to serve in mission in ways unheard of before 1955. Like, for example, going to serve in mission as a family. Here is how it all happened. Monsignor Anthony Browers listened to the Holy Spirit who spoke through the bishops in Africa in 1954. They asked for help and Monsignor Browers acted on it. As a result, for 67 years now, over 750 single Catholic men and women, married couples and families have served as lay mission helpers with those who are marginalized in 37 countries and counting. They shared their professional gifts and witnessed their Catholic faith. Monsignor Brower's desire to involve laity in the missionary work of the church was rooted in his understanding of baptism. Needless to say, this prophetic insight predated by seven years the rediscoveries of baptism, mission, and laity by the Second Vatican Council. Monsignor Brower's vision of laity's involvement in mission, in a special way, included Catholic families. As a result, Lay Mission Helpers Association was the first lay Catholic missionary organization, at least in the United States, that recognized the unique value of the witness of Catholic family in mission. And we have never stopped. There have been many families that shared their gifts and witnessed their faith as Lay Mission Helpers and continue to do so. Their children played an integral part of that witness by making friends and building bridges because of their innocence, natural openness, and playfulness. Small and large, some that even grew in mission, these families have been a true blessing to us and mission diocese. They recognized and embraced their baptismal call to mission and as a result, impacted thousands of lives as they themselves were enriched in return by new friends, partners, and co-workers from different cultures, languages, and traditions. We are deeply grateful to the Holy Spirit for calling so many families, married couples, and single men and women to serve the poor and the marginalized as lay mission helpers. You have made the world a better place. We are grateful to them for accepting that call, for the sacrifices that came with the call, and for their ongoing relationship with us. And we are equally grateful to our supporters who have made following that missionary call possible 
from the very first class of six lay mission helpers going to Tanzania, Uganda, and Sudan, until now in Honduras and Ghana. Thank you. May God inspire ever more Catholic professionals to live their Catholic faith, to share their gifts, and learn from others while walking with those who are marginalized in the world, sharing their gifts and witnessing their faith as lay mission helpers. You continue to impact countless lives by supporting men, women, married couples, and families who serve in mission. You've supported people like Joyce Alpa, who is being honored this evening for her service in Cameroon as an accountant. She'll be receiving the, the Ernst Ophels Award, named after an early lay mission helper who died while serving in Ecuador in 1962. Joyce Alpa was born and raised in a farming community in Dyersville, Iowa. She came to California, got married, had a daughter, and worked as an accountant for 30 years. She also volunteered at her parish, St. Bernard in Bellflower, in youth ministry, confirmation, and religious ed. She helped lead two trips to World Youth Day in Rome and Toronto. Widowed and with her daughter raised, Joyce applied to the Peace Corps, but learned about lay mission helpers during Mass when a veteran lay mission helper spoke about the organization. Wanting to not only serve, but to share her faith, she felt lay mission helpers was a better fit. Joyce joined lay mission helpers and served in Cameroon from 2003 to 2006 as the bursar of St. Sylvester Secondary School in the Diocese of Kumbo. The school was located in Sop, a farming town, which Joyce would tell her students, you never know where God is calling you, from a farming town in the U.S. to a farming town in Cameroon. Upon her return to the United States, Joyce shared her mission experience at the Justice Meal Dinners in the Confirmation Program at her parish. She also spoke at several elementary schools through the Missionary Childhood Association's mission speaker program and represented lay mission helpers at their booth at the Religious Education Congress. Joyce had the opportunity to return to Cameroon for two short-term mission trips, installing a financial software program at the hospitals run by the tertiary Franciscans and training the sisters on how to use the program. In 2013, Joyce began working one day a week at the Lay Mission Helper office as the bookkeeper. In addition, she has volunteered her time by helping with discernment weekends, serving as the secretary of the Veterans Committee, welcoming new candidates, 
participating in Lay Mission Helper events, and in many, many other ways. Thank you so much, Joyce, for everything you have done for the Lay Mission Helpers Association, your commitment to mission in Cameroon, your service to our staff and our association for over a decade as our bookkeeper, and also your continued financial support has been just wonderful, and we appreciate you. So on behalf of the Board of Directors for Lay Mission Helpers as President, I would like to present to you the Ernst Opals Award for 2022. Thank you. Hi, I'm, as you just heard, my name is Joyce Alpa. I served in Cameroon 2003 to 2006. Uh, I grew up in a small farming community in Iowa, and it was unusual to find out that 50 years later, I would be living and serving in a farming community in Africa. I used to tell the students over there, you never know where God will be leading you. I love to travel, and I've visited many countries in, through my lifetime, but it's totally different when you actually go and live in a community and become a part of that community for three years. You actually you get um, into the culture and you find out that it's really a whole different experience than just visiting a country. And we go as a missionary and we always think we're going to take God to them. But as one of my teachers in the formation program reminded me, God is already there. And it was just a great experience to just be sharing God, the same God that's everywhere with them in, the, in their culture. I, um, I'm now working as a bookkeeper at the Lay Mission Helper Office. I was also able to return to Cameroon for two short-term projects. And it was really interesting to be able to go back and visit the people and the places that I had served with in the country there. We all um, want to thank everybody who has ever helped by support, whether by prayer or by monetary support for all our missionaries. One of the things that one of my teachers also was talking about was making a calendar before I went on my mission. And the idea was to have people fill in the calendar and each day that they could pray for me and I would also pray for them. So I took my calendar to my office and my work and said, you know, hopefully I'll get 30 people to fill in the little squares and be able to use that in my mission. Turned out that I had like five or six people on each day. So it was, so when I was in mission, I could take it out every day and look at the names that were on that list and I could pray for them and I knew they were praying for me. And it was a way of kind of having a close contact with the people back home. So again, the financial support is so important. The prayer is so important. We wouldn't be able to do this without all of you, the financial support. So we really want to thank everybody that has donated through the years or whatever, monthly or one time, whatever. But we all appreciate that. We managed to also buy some computers for our students when we were in Cameroon. So it is important for the financial support, but the prayers are really important also. So once again, I'd love to thank everybody who has donated over the years. Three years sounds like a long time, but it's a very short time in the lifespan. And my experience in Cameroon influenced the rest of my life. So thank you all. I thank, appreciate this award. I'm very honored to receive the Ernst Ophel Award for the service that, you know, was really, we go with the idea that we are going to, to give. And we find out when we come back that we have gotten so much more than we have ever given. And so I thank Lay Mission Helpers for their whole program to be able to be a part of this whole experience and it's a big highlight of my life. Three years is all short in my lifespan, but it definitely influenced my life. Thank you all and God bless you all.
As you could hear, Joyce is very grateful for the financial and spiritual support she received, and so are we. One of the people who support us is Sister Gretchen Haler, and we are honoring her tonight. Some time ago, we went to visit her at the Regina residence in Orange and presented her with the uh, St. Therese of Lisieux Award for her support of our lay missionary service. And before I invite you to watch that ceremony, I want to say hello and greet all the sisters at the Regina residence in Orange, who I am told are watching us live. So welcome, sisters, and we are very happy to have you with us. And now let us watch the award ceremony for Sister Gretchen Heiler. Sister Gretchen Heiler has been a member of the Religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary congregation for over 60 years. A woman of many talents, Sister Gretchen has served in a variety of ministries, as an elementary and secondary school teacher, as the RSHM Communications Director in Rome, and in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles as a catechist formator, a religious education coordinator, and media consultant. She was a sought-after speaker and retreat director for parish and school staffs. Sister Gretchen has written books on faith and media, including Making a Place for Others, The Ministry of Hospitality. She served on the board of directors of the Los Angeles Children's Museum, the National Catholic Reporter, and the Tidings, which was the Los Angeles Archdiocesan newspaper. In the early 2000s, Sister Gretchen began leading the closing retreat for our lay mission helper candidates in formation, and also led Lenten Days of Reflection. She later became a valued member of the lay mission helpers board of directors, serving on the development and program committees. Always willing to be of assistance, Gretchen was a member of the gala committee, sharing her ideas and obtaining items for the silent auction. She also secured sponsorship of a table at the in-person gala events by her community and facilitated the donation of a vehicle for our formation program. Sister Gretchen has valued her experience with the Lay Mission Helpers as a place that connects mission and ministry for laity. We are pleased to honor her with the 2022 St. Therese of Lisieux Award. Sister Gretchen, we'd like to thank you so much for everything you've done for Lay Mission Helpers. Thank you. You've served on the board for a decade, decade and your leadership, sense of humor, <laughs> and um, your financial contributions to our organization are greatly appreciated. That's my community. And thank you very much as well. Your spirit of the church and your commitment to mission definitely embody the spirit of St. Therese. So on behalf of the Lay Mission Helpers Association and as president, I'd like to make sure that you get your award, whoops, the St. Teresa Award for Lay Mission Helpers for 2022. Thank you. Anyway, it was a pleasure to be on the board of directors for so many years. Um, and uh, it's a great organization. Um, when I was a child, um, I used to contribute to the Pagan Babies. I don't know if any of you remember that. Or that. And um, that's when I gained my love for the uh, for the missions as a as a little kid. And I remember put you know I had a little can in my bedroom, and I used to put away some of my allowance into the can so I could make a contribution. And um, so you know it was it's interesting that you know all all those years um, being involved in that. And also um, I had great love for St. Therese um, of Lisieux uh, when I, I took her name as my confirmation name. So um, so St. Therese has been uh, a, uh, a um, great, um, uh, I guess, patron of mine in a sense, you know. Um, oh, yes. And then when I entered the community, um, I wanted to take the same the name St. Therese, but there was already a Tres in the community, so I asked if I could take the name Francis Xavier. Oh, that's true. So that's the other patron of the missions. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, 
uh, sister, I was Madam Francis Xavier. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but I'm very honored to, to receive this award. It's, it's an extraordinary um, organization, and uh, I, you know, was involved on the board, but I also you know, taught classes to the to the missionaries, and they're just extraordinary people, just ordinary people, husbands and wives together. Sometimes bringing their children to the missions, mm -hmm. and so uh, if you ever want to know of an organization to give your support to monetarily and all you, also your prayers, remember the Lay Mission Helpers are an extraordinarily fine organization. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for the award and thanks for all of you that came today. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So we're very grateful to this year's honorees, Joyce Alpa and Sister Gretchen Heiler, for their commitment to mission and their support of our missionary service. We're grateful to all who are making our work possible and through our service are now changing the lives in Honduras and Ghana. So let's see how your support is changing lives of teens, children and families in Honduras through the service of Jacob and Nancy Peterson who have been sharing their gifts there since January of this year. So my name is Nancy Peterson. I am an English as a second language instructor, teacher here in a middle school called um, Cardinal, uh, Saint Instituto Cardinal Rodriguez. And I have been teaching middle schoolers, 7th, 8th, and ninth graders, English. Being here in Puticalpa has been an amazing experience. Uh, it is very different, of course, from uh, any other living situation we have had. I have found the people in Puticalpa very, very warm to be very warm, pleasant, friendly people willing to open to helping you out uh, if you need it. Uh, the school that I'm working at, the students are wonderful. The staff, the faculty and staff are absolutely wonderful. Uh, they're always willing to, as, as well, they're always willing to help. They're always, you know, willing to lend a hand if you need it. Um, the students have been very polite, very pleasant. The only thing that I have encountered that has been a really big surprise for me is the fear that these students have for learning English. They're, they're afraid of um, mispronouncing uh, in English and they have not had a, a from what I've understood, uh, before they have hit middle school, uh, a lot of times they don't have a very good um, introduction to English as a language, and so there is uh, there is fear uh, with these students uh, when they come into English class. Um, so my job has been um, one of the challenges that I have is to try to make uh, the class. Um, interesting and comfortable for them, um, as well as in uh, encouraging them to participate um, and creating a safe, uh, essentially creating a safe learning environment is what one of my primary goals right now is to do for my students. These students, if they can pick up English uh, and, and become fluent in it, that's going to open up a lot of doors for them. It's going to open up um, all kinds of opportunities for them in the future. Uh, everything from uh, being able to find a job to um, if they want to go visit and travel around the world. It's just going to be uh, a, a very good benefit for them. I wish to thank our supporters. Um, there is not a day that we don't think about your support. Uh, you are the reason why we can be here, and we are very, very grateful to that. God bless you guys for, for your support. Eh, pues, muy buenas tardes. Eh, mi nombre es Mariana. Soy la directora de Instituto Cardenal, eh, una institución educativa privada 
en donde Nancy nos está apoyando con la clase de inglés. Es importante mencionar que ella ha llegado a la institución para reforzar nuestros estudiantes. Entendemos que aquí a nivel local el problema que tenemos es que nuestros estudiantes no, no cuentan con una base eh, del inglés. A pesar de que es una clase básica en la malla curricular de, de nuestro Honduras. Ella eh, es un eslabón, por decirlo así, para que nuestros estudiantes logren afianzar o logren... Se me olvidó la palabra. Ok, se me, eh, afianzar o reforzar su nivel de inglés. Porque los chicos que nosotros tenemos vienen de instituciones públicas que no cuentan con un nivel de, con un nivel de inglés. El nivel de ellos es cero. Pero eh, y en Instituto Cardenal y con la de llegada de Nancy podemos reforzar y podemos lograr que ellos puedan tener una mejor base a nivel universitario. Como institución, nuestro objetivo principal es lograr que ellos... Eh, eh, a, nivel universitario, a nivel universitario puedan defenderse y, decir, y poder encontrar una mejor fuente de trabajo. Decir, yo sé un nivel básico que es el apoyo que Nancy nos está dando. Eh, agradecemos pues su apoyo, agradecemos siempre que ella está en contacto mutuo con nuestros estudiantes y logra que ellos puedan eh, tener esa confianza. Como, eh, a nivel local y decir ellos puedo ellos pueden defenderse entonces eh, como les decía nuestro objetivo es lograr que nuestros estudiantes tengan una mejor base y Nancy lo con su trabajo con su apoyo ella pues está logrando que nosotros tengamos eso I am really happy and excited that Nancy is here because I am actually learning a lot. Uh, all than sharing the classes and learning a few things from her. And I am happy that she is really open to also learn how to deal with the whole education system here in Honduras as well. So my name is Jacob Peterson. I'm a lay mission helper serving as a school psychologist in Huticalpa, Honduras. So currently I work at es uh, I currently work at Escuelita Nazareth, um, the only school in Olancho State dedicated to helping students with learning disabilities. Um, primarily I conduct evaluations, um, I give diagnostic impressions, and I provide both parents and teachers with uh, helpful information to, uh, to ease the symptoms of those kind of disorders. So on the, in Honduras, um, while they certainly have you know, many dedicated educational professionals, um, their capacities to work with disabled students are not as robust as they are in the States. Um, not by a long shot. And uh, when those students fall behind because of a, dis uh, of a disability, they're referred here, um, either by a teacher or by a parent or by a doctor. And uh, here we determine what is, you know, what's driving their difficulties in school and how we can help the student work around them uh, because they can. We serve students with autism spectrum disorder, um, hearing impairments, visual impairments, ADHD, um, Down syndrome, um, learning disabilities such as dyslexia and dyscalculia. In fact, really, if, uh, if a student has a learning disorder, if, if, if something in the student's mind is impacting their performance in school or even at home, we help, we help parents and teachers deal with it. Uh, as an example, with, with one student who had autism spectrum disorder, not only did I conduct you know, an, evaluation, uh, an evaluation for that student, um, but I also provided the parent with tips at home for work, you know, for for you know, living with a, a child with autism, um, because you know, while certainly it's a spectrum disorder, there are certain common traits that do go into it, 
And um, a lot of parents here, they're you know, not familiar with the disorder itself, much less what you can do about it once, you know, once your child is diagnosed with it. So uh, I, I was looking for, you know, opportunities to do as much as I can during my time as a lay mission helper. Um, and luckily here in Hutukalpa, the Catholic community here is, is thriving and strong and active. And uh, there is a priest just down the street over at a parish called Santa Gertrudis who runs a prison ministry who has been serving the inmates there for I, I don't know how many years. Um, and I said I was interested. And the very first day I showed up, the chapel was practically, pract uh, practically packed to the rafters. Um, and then I realized I had to switch to a psychoeducational group format to help teach these guys, you know, how to use their minds and how to, you know, how to, you know, how to use their thoughts to better their lives as opposed to having their thoughts control them. Honduras in general is one of those places that is poor but good. And I think that's something I really want to, you know, would want to communicate to, you know, people back home in the U.S. is you know, the, the media feeds us one story about Honduras, and it's almost overwhelmingly negative. The people here so far have proven to be friendly, hopeful, dedicated, devout. They love God and their families. Um, they're, just, they're just all kinds of salt to the earth. And, and so for this opportunity to be here in this community, um, to serve those who have specifically requested my skills for as long as I can, uh, as long as I'm able to do so, I'd like to give a big, big thank you to you know the uh, Lay Mission Helper donors, um, to our you know support uh, to our support team over at uh, Lay Mission Helper's house, and um, and of course to the staff here at Escalita Nazareth, and most of all the kids. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Francisco Barahona. Soy el director de operaciones de Fundación Olancho Aide. Y en esta ocasión quiero agradecer a Lay Mission Helpers por eh, contribuir con el voluntario Jacob eh, para Escuela Nazaret. Como lo he dicho en ocasiones anteriores, eh, hace muchos años estábamos queriendo contar con un profesional de la talla de Jacob y ahora lo tenemos aquí. Sabemos que va a ser de mucho beneficio para los niños y para todas las familias que estos niños representan. Entonces, gracias por todo. Esperemos que esta relación de voluntariado dure muchos años. Saludes a todos por allá. Bye. Ya. Hola, mi nombre es Karen Patricia Isidro. Soy la mamá de Isaías Emanuel Lobo. El cual he llegado a este lugar donde eh, a buscar ayuda sobre mi hijo, ya que en las escuelas anteriores eh, me dicen que él tiene problemas de aprendizaje y problemas de comportamiento, o sea, hiperactividad. Eh, él se distrae con cualquier cosa, entonces eh, he venido a buscar una solución. A, dependiendo la evaluación que me le haga, me gustaría, verdad, de que eh, me le ayudara bastante. Eh, necesito que él sea un niño eh, de, independiente, que pueda manejar la situación eh, de lectura, de lenguaje, por sí solo, eh, sin depender de nadie. Eh, eh, bueno, espero la ayuda. Buenas tardes, eh, mi nombre es Gloria Cruz Cuba. Soy la directora de la Escuela de Educación Especial Nazaret y está ubicada en la ciudad de Cuticalpa, departamento de Olancho y en nuestro bello país, Honduras. Somos un centro educativo en el que atendemos eh, personas con discapacidad, niños y jóvenes. Pues en este momento les hablaré del gran trabajo que hace Yeiko dentro de nuestra institución. Él eh, en, hace la labor de psicólogo, eh, nos ayuda a las evaluaciones que realizamos a los niños y jóvenes que necesitan adquirir un cupo de ingreso a este centro educativo. De igual manera nos está ayudando al reclutamiento del personal y a hablar con los padres de familia para dar instrucciones al trabajo que tienen que realizar en su casa con los niños que presentan una discapacidad. 
Eh, agradecemos por el gran apoyo que nos está prestando la Fundación en este, la misión en este momento a nuestra institución y les deseamos lo mejor y que decirles que las puertas de la Escuela Nazaret están abiertas para ustedes y que aquí eh, les llevaremos en, nuestros or en nuestras oraciones para que siempre tengan en su corazón a nuestro centro educativo. Gracias por permitir que Yeiko esté en nuestra institución y sabemos que va a ser de gran bendición para nosotros como personal, para nuestros niños y para los padres de familia. Gracias. Thank you so much for supporting our missionaries. And we've just checked and we haven't quite made our goal, so we need your help. So if you're going we to are close. donate, we are close. <laughs> very close. <laughs> but we'd like to get there this evening and we'd appreciate your help. So click on that donate button or say it with me now. Text Mission LMH to 41444 and make that donation. We're really close. Jacob, Nancy and their children, Santi and Soliana have been serving now for 10 months and have already impacted the lives of children, teens, families, and even people who are imprisoned. When you send the Petersons to Honduras, you also send Josie Cruz to Ghana, where she joined Karen Hanka, who is in her fourth year of service. Now here is an update on what your support is accomplishing in Damongo, Ghana. Hello, I'm Karen Hunka. I am a lay mission helper living and working here in Ghana, Africa. I am now into my fourth year working here. I am an accountant and an auditor. My first few years here, I worked at the Secretariat as an accounting clerk. Now I am working as a bursar at St. Anne's Girls Catholic Senior High School. I love doing that job because I get to see the girls every day, work with the girls, um, I get to pray with them every Tuesday and Friday at Mass. So I love my job here at the school. Um, what else is wonderful about living here on the school on campus is that I have a wonderful family who lives beside me. They have three young children and I just adore being around them. I wouldn't be able to be here without your support. So please know that any money that you're given is used for a great cause. Lay Mission Helpers is a wonderful organization. It has brought joy to my life as it brings joy to all the people's lives that I tend to. Thank you. Hello, my name is Josie Cruz. I'm a Lay Mission Helper for the Diocese of Damongo. I was assigned here as an accountant. I will be working with the Secretariat of the Diocese of Damongo. My work will basically involve doing accounting work and also I just found out I'm going to be part of the project committee, um, looking at projects and making sure that reports are returned to the donors so our funding doesn't dry up. Uh, at this time, I want to thank all the sponsors of all those who gave their support, both in prayers and finances, because it's really helping a lot our mission here in Damongo, Ghana. So I am. Paramatan Muasayir, Vicar General of the Diocese of Damango. Um, I'd like to begin on a note of gratitude for uh, the support to the mission here in the diocese, particularly the work that uh, Karen Honka and uh, Josie Cruz are doing. Uh, wonderful works that uh, uh, in our finance office and the education the school, Sagis, where uh, uh, Karen is, the Beza. She's doing wonderful work, tremendous work there to I mean, help the school pick up financially to be uh, self-reliant. One very exciting thing that uh, I'd like to bring to your notice is um, that through the intervention of uh, Karen, we are doing something very, for the very first time in the history, in the life of the diocese, what we call internal audit 
of our parishes. Since the creation of the diocese 1995, we have always had external, external auditing of the uh, diocesan secretariat, where it's a requirement whenever we have to send uh, reports to Rome that the, the audit report is part. But our parishes uh, do not have uh, the, the chance to be audited even internally so that they have the uh, uh, policies put in place for proper financial management. And we know that that's a, 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 a very serious area if the church is not to be accused of mismanagement of, of funds. So it's a very great help that she, with the support of uh, our finance office and uh, Josie Cruz, uh, they have started going around the parishes to do this internal audit. Uh, people are getting scared of maybe being exposed, of not, of not doing things right, but we we'll always give them the assurance the focus is not to show where one has gone wrong. The, the focus is to get one learn uh, best practices. If you, you are supposed to keep this record, that record, and you don't have it, then you are taught exactly how to do things right. And I believe this is a good start uh, that we want to continue. At our next priest assembly, get a, a feeling, the uh, uh, feedback from our pastors, how it has been and how that is helping them do things better, do things differently. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I am Mr. Cletus Chantor, the financial administrator of uh, Damago Diocese. Um, I must say that their presence in the diocese has been enormous as the rules that they, they play in helping the financial aspect of the diocese. Um, since working with current since 2018, you know, up till now, I can say that all the assignments that uh, were given to her, she has worked as a mayor, tremendously to achieve all of them. Um, I'd like to share with you some of the key th uh, roles that uh, she was given as far as uh, the, the, the work here is concerned. Um, basically, as a diocese, day in, day out, you have uh, parishes and various individuals coming in with uh, special collections that are taken at the parish level and that are remitted to the diocesan office for also on, onwards uh, submission to National Catholic Secretariat and then to Vatican. These are some of the things we give her the opportunity uh, to interact with priests and individuals who are coming in with these monies, take the monies, confirm the amount and issue official receipt of the diocese to the individuals. That is an issue of accountability, which I think that she handles so well from beginning up to now. Um, another key thing that uh, she, we assigned her, which she successfully achieved, was also the pre pre I mean, preparation of checks and then payment vouchers, which is a, a matter of internal control uh, system. And uh, I also was able to take her through an entirely I mean, new system, which is the tally accounting software. That is a software we use as a diocese to maintain all our accounting records. Well, it was a new thing, but she took active, you know, attention uh, to, you know, to learn about the software and uh, she has been able to process and post most of the, the accounting transaction from the payment vouchers, as I indicated, from the receipt books into the, the, the accounting software, which helps us to generate reports for the bishop on monthly, quarterly basis. Based on all this um, she has achieved in the office here, in the Dyson Finance I mean, office, you know, there was a, a bit of a, a lapse at the St. Anne's Girls Senior High School. We, you know, we didn't have an accountant and uh, looking at her experience she has gathered and the achievements she made over here, we realized that she was a, you know, a, a, a qualified person. She was capable of entirely handling the accounts of that, of that school. I, I must say that their presence is, 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 is helpful to not only the diocese, but to wherever they may, they, they may find themselves because I mean, uh, they are willing, they, are, they open their arms, they are willing to do any assignment that is given to them. And I, I think the program is, is, is to say is very, very important and I will continue to recommend that. I mean, more people, once they are interested to, to serve countries and dioceses like ours, I mean, we should, we should give them the chance I am particularly happy Josie has just arrived and uh, I can see the, the same enthusiasm that 
she has come with. I'm sure with the same you know, spirit of enthusiasm that she brought, we are going to have a very beautiful, wonderful encounter. She will also you know, give up her best and that will together will build a, a stronger financial system for the diocese. So I will continue to, as I said, call on lay mission helpers to give us, continuously collaborate with the Diocese of Damango, giving us all these wonderful people so that that is a way we can build a formidable society, not only for, for Ghana, not only for Damango Diocese, but for the entire world. Thank you. So, my name is Mary Asomta Minsikte, the headmistress of St. Anne's Girls Senior High School. I just took over in January, not quite long, and uh, Karen was also sent down to be the bezer. And in fact, when I took over, it wasn't easy because the headmistress who left uh, we didn't sit together for her to actually show me what and what to do. So I was really struggling to have my feet on the ground. But when uh, Karen came in, because she ever worked here before, she, she was on top of issues and she took me through a lot of things. In fact, uh, it's not because Karen is around, but People who are even closer as know that she's playing a great role in so far as the day-to-day -day running of the school is concerned. She's doing a lot and we are grateful. And we pray that you send in more of the missionaries to support us, especially to Sagis. If you can even give us people who can teach here, we'll be so much grateful to that. My name is Anne. And Granny Karen has been a neighbor for the past three years. She has helped us materially and spiritually. I wish she stays with us forever. Thank you for sending these wonderful lay mission helpers and for making a real difference in the lives of those they serve. As you can see, your generosity makes a lasting impact, makes people's lives easier, and creates new opportunities for them. So thank you. You, you help us serve the poor, and you help us recruit and train new lay mission helpers like Mark McGraw, who is currently in formation and who will be leaving for his mission in January. So let's meet Mark. Hi, um, I'm Mark McGraw. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Pretty much a um, lifelong resident of Ohio and Cleveland. Um, my background's a little varied. I uh, I went to college to become a um, high school history teacher. Um, went on to the uh, restaurant business for a little while, and most recently I've been working as a contractor um, and a property manager, uh, which is. Uh, where my skills will be utilized for lay mission helpers uh, in Ghana, uh, working for the uh, Diocese of Domongo, um, overseeing the facilities as a facilities manager. I have, uh, most importantly to me, as I do have two children that are grown, um, Rachel and Richard, who are uh, you know, very important to me. Um, but they are, they're okay with, uh, with going away for a few years. I've been, I, I went to, um, you know, 12 years of Catholic school growing up. Uh, the high school was a Jesuit school, which I've always, you know, I've really kind of always liked the Jesuits. Um, and, you know, my, my children were also raised Catholic, and I was a uh, member of St. Augustine Parish in Cleveland, Ohio, which was kind of an inner city parish where, um, you know, I, I saw a lot of uh, the church, the church in action, um, helping people. Uh, they had a they had a great outreach program um, with meals and uh, helping helping disadvantaged people, which uh, which which I certainly appreciated, and uh, I'm sure it kind of helped me get on, get me on this road. I really in, enjoyed the formation here. Um, not only uh, getting in touch with myself as far as um, 
understanding you know motivations uh, which uh, lay mission helpers does a great job with that but also um, you know meet, meeting a lot of new people uh, the, the staff has been just you know outstanding and very gracious and uh, welcoming us to us um, people from different backgrounds and, uh, but we get a lot of learning a lot about the um, cultures um, learning how to uh, make sure we can interact with people um, you know, there's a there's a lot of uh, spirituality involved, or you know, going to going to church and doing morning and evening prayers daily, um, but but still enough time um, for ourselves to do some contemplation and uh, you know check out the Los Angeles area. Um, I've always felt very fortunate in my life, um, and for years I thought it was just being fortunate. As as the years went on, I. Uh, I think I, I became aware of more than just being fortunate as you know, I kind of started doing a little more reading and contemplation and I, I really enjoyed uh, coaching kids over the years which I did in my spare time. I, I felt sharing all the things I'm so grateful for with others would be a, you know, a good outlet. I, mean, I don't think that um, the gifts that we receive uh, from God should are meant to like just stay inside us. Um, they're, they, they should be shared with others. Um, I began to look around for uh, you know different situations because I, I don't think we can just kind of wander off. Um, I, I started to look online mainly, and lay mission helpers seem to provide a a great um, you know proven uh, system for you know placing people in my situation in the areas of need. Um, you know, you, you, you do need the structure. I was, I'm very happy with, um, you know, the situation they're providing me with, which I think is a, uh, I mean, I, I know it's a win situation for me. I'm hoping it's a uh, win situation for the um, diocese in Ghana. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I feel at this point, I'm really getting prepared well for that situation. You know, lastly, and certainly not uh, least importantly, I'm, I'm very thankful for all the uh, people that help lay mission helpers. I, I realize that there's a cost involved for uh, sending somebody like me, you know, providing a, a, a staff, a training, um, a place to go, um, where, where, uh, like, where as a candidate I'm going to feel safe, um, and, uh, you know, they the, the organization has been around so long and they're well respected that I, I can't imagine being in a better place to be doing what I want to do. Please pray for Mark and for all who commit to serve in mission. Remember, you can click on that donate button, text mission LMH to four one four four four. Call our main line 213-368-1870 to make your gift. The silent auction closes on Monday. Remember, you are supporting a vital work of lay mission helpers. We are grateful to all our missionaries, and we are also very grateful to you who make their service possible. I'd like to give a special thanks to our gala committee and our staff for all the work they've put into putting this evening's event together. Janice England, our program director, put together almost every video you watch this evening and she did a fantastic job. Luisa Rodriguez Rivera, our administrative assistant, was in charge of our silent, is in charge of our silent auction. And Janice, I'm sorry, Joyce Alpa, one of our award recipients this evening, is also working right now at the phones. So we appreciate everyone and Damien Cabot, our executive director, who is ultimately responsible for the event you've seen this evening. So thank you all. Next year's gala is already in the works and we hope we'll be able to see you in person to thank you for your support financially and through prayer. Our gala will be held on October 7th, 2023. So mark your calendars for October 7th, 2023. Before we conclude this evening with a prayer, I want to also thank Marie Browers, the board president, for co-hosting this evening with us. So let us pray in the words of Pope Francis. Heavenly Father, when your son rose from the dead, he commissioned his followers 
to go out and make disciples of all nations. You remind us that through our baptism, we share in that mission of the Church. Help us make it possible for all peoples to experience the saving love and mercy of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much and good night. Good night. Yeah.